Hello again. Today we're talking about the vehicle sagging when left overnight. Typically a new vehicle will stay at or near the ride height when it's parked. Uh, whether that's for a day or a week, it doesn't really matter. But as these vehicles age, it's not uncommon to come outside in the morning and find that the front, the back, or the entire vehicle is depressurized and sitting low. This is almost always a sign of a leak in the system, and locating the leak can be difficult. It's easy to ignore such a leak because you can just start the car and it'll rise back up and you can go on about your day, but repeatedly repressurizing of the air springs each day will cause excessive stress on the compressor and decrease its lifespan. Before I talk about finding a leak, let me explain the Range Rover Sports air suspension system. The Range Rover Sports air suspension system consists of a compressor, an air reservoir, three valve blocks, and the air springs. When the car starts up initially, it will replenish any lost pressure in the system and raise the springs to the appropriate height. At any time, if the height change required is less than 20 millimeters, the vehicle will use the compressor. Height changes of more than 20 millimeters will activate the compressor and utilize compressed air stored in the reservoir in order to speed up the height change. And then once the desired height change is achieved, the compressor will continue to run and fill the reservoir. Now, let's say you want to raise the suspension in the morning. The air compressor first sends air to the middle valve block. This valve block's only purpose is to fill or drain the compressed air reservoir when needed. Compressed air always flows unchecked to the front and rear valve blocks equally. Here the lateral solenoids can open, and when they do, they allow compressed air to fill the individual springs. After filling or any time while driving, if the air springs are determined to be at different heights, the middle solenoid can open and share air pressure between the springs to equal them out. When it comes time to drop a spring, the lateral solenoids again open, but this time the proximal system is depressurized. Air now flows out of the springs and back to the compressor. Here it encounters a final check valve that allows it to vent to the atmosphere through a silencer. So that's how the air springs fill and drop normally. One issue is that the air compressor uses a chamber full of desiccation beads to dry incoming air before it's compressed. The beads tend to create dust as they age, and the dust deposits on all surfaces inside of the air suspension system. As the dust settles, it interferes with the rubber seals of the solenoids. Additionally, it's not uncommon for the air springs themselves to leak, given that they consist of a degradable rubber, although this is more prevalent in the full-size Range Rover. The biggest issue is, if there is a leak, it's difficult to find because the vehicle readjusts its height throughout the night. When the vehicle is parked, the air suspension module wakes up two hours after the ignition was last switched off, and then it also wakes up every six hours after that. The vehicle height is checked at that time, and if the vehicle is not level within a preset tolerance, small downwards only height adjustments may be made automatically. This creates a problem because if the front right air spring is leaking, you may see the entire front end or the entire vehicle sagging rather than just the front right, as the vehicle is attempting to level all night. Follow these steps to correctly isolate the problem area first, then it's just a matter of determining if the leak is from the air spring, the valve block, or possibly a line connecting the two. This test will take place overnight while the vehicle is parked. The first step is to put the vehicle in extended height mode the night before the test. This will make any changes in height more dramatic. Park the car and open the hood. Now the next thing you need to do is disconnect the air suspension power supply. This way it won't raise, level, change, do anything overnight. Uh, there's two ways to go about this. You could disconnect the battery, which is fine, that'll work. Or probably the easier way would be to just disconnect the fuse. And so the battery box houses both of these things. And so under here, you'll see the battery itself and adjacent to that is the fuse box. And so I'll bring it a little closer and take the fuse out. Okay, here we have a view of the fuse box under the hood. Here is a diagram that comes underneath the lid for this. And as you can see, there's a variety of fuses, but the one that we're interested in is this 20 amp fuse. That's the third from the bottom, close to these big fuses. So if you take this and lay it like that, 
this is basically the layout of the fuses. So get this out of the way. You'll see the big fuses are here. The 20 amp fuse that controls the height sensor is um, the third one from the bottom. So this yellow 20 amp one. If you look at the box, there's actually another similar looking uh, diagram up here. That's a five amp fuse. This one is for the height, uh, this, the air suspension control module. And so you don't need to take this one out because this one's the one that actually powers everything. This is just the module. So take a fuse extractor. I don't have, I mean, I have one somewhere, but I couldn't find it. So just use whatever and take your 20 amp out. And that's fine. Oh, one more thing. If you're using a metal tool next to the positive terminal, just be careful not to touch the terminal while you're touching anything to ground. This isn't to ground, this is positive as well. But doing so will uh, probably weld the two metal parts together and you might get burned in the process, so just watch out. The next step is to go to each wheel and measure their heights. Now that the air suspension uh, fuse has been removed, the height should, should in theory stay the same as long as there's no leaks in the system. Uh, overnight, it should be the same. Now you might come out and find that one of the corners is down and because the vehicle can't auto level, that corner that's down is the culprit and there's a leak in that corner. If you find the entire front end or back end is dropped, that means one of two things. That means either both of the springs or are leaking or both of the front connections are leaking or it's just the valve block and in my experience it's more likely to be just the valve block and so if you come out and the entire front or the entire back is uh, depressurized then I would definitely go for changing the valve block first especially since this part is about fifty to sixty dollars and is relatively straightforward to replace and I have videos on replacing that as well